In April 1981, when the first space shuttle launch took place, NASA engineers involved in the development of the spacecraft that had become known as the most complex machine ever built were understandably proud of their creation. The centerpiece of a space transportation system that envisioned frequent flights with a fleet of reusable vehicles, the space shuttle was designed to facilitate the cost-effective deployment of modern commercial satellites, as well as increasing the scope and breadth of space science. The first five shuttle flights proved the validity of the program's concept and the capabilities of the vehicle, as the shuttle Columbia was put through a series of flight tests and, with STS-5 in November 1982, facilitated the deployment of two commercial satellites. With STS-6, NASA officials decided to test the ability of its astronauts to extend the program's capabilities beyond the vehicle itself. From the very first U.S. spacewalk, by Ed White during Gemini 4 in June 1965, the ability to do useful work while engaged in extravehicular activity was seen as a capability central to achieving the fundamental goals of space exploration. The art of the EVA had been carefully developed throughout the Gemini and Apollo programs, and the ability to maneuver around outside their orbiting laboratory played a key role in the success of the astronauts of the Skylab space station. By the time of STS-6, however, seven years had passed since the last American EVA. The U.S. space program had entered a new era, and the complexities of walking in space were compounded by the complexities of the program's new focus. The sixth shuttle launch also featured an entirely new addition to the space shuttle fleet, as it was the first flight of the space shuttle Challenger. Paul Weitz commanded STS-6, Carol Bobko served as pilot, and Story Musgrave and Donald Peterson were designated mission specialists whose duties would include an attempt at the first EVA of the space shuttle program. Challenger launched on its maiden flight on April 4, 1983. Musgrave and Peterson set about their EVA tasks in Challenger's open cargo bay in the waning hours of April 7. Methodically testing EVA equipment and procedures that had been specially designed for use in the shuttle program, in spacesuits that had evolved to meet the demands of the new era of long and complicated spacewalks, Musgrave and Peterson spent four hours and ten minutes at their work. The successful first EVA of the shuttle era proved an auspicious omen of things to come, as spacewalking astronauts would in time play a key role in many of the program's most remarkable achievements. During STS-49 in 1992, for example, crew members made three long spacewalks, including the first-ever three-person EVA, to rescue the stranded Intelsat-6 satellite. During the same mission, Catherine Thornton set a new record for the longest spacewalk by a female astronaut when she and crewmate Thomas Akers conducted a seven-hour, 44-minute test of space station assembly procedures. And, in what is, with its follow-on missions, perhaps the most remarkable EVA feat yet attempted, the astronauts of STS-61 in December 1993 achieved the first servicing of the Hubble Space Telescope. Crew members, including Story Musgrave, Catherine Thornton, and Thomas Akers, made five long EVAs, working in space for a total of more than 35 hours, while repairing the space telescope, which had been hindered by a manufacturing flaw since its launch in 1990. With subsequent Hubble servicing missions, 
NASA demonstrated the value of maintaining a core of astronauts experienced in the art of the EVA, while the astronauts themselves expanded the idea of what human beings can achieve even on the far horizon while working in space.